Hey, welcome back to your favorite Math 126 course. We're going to take a look at oops, uh, solving quadratic equations using factoring, square root method, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. So quadratic functions are anything of this form here, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Right? So we're a power of 2. Of course, a cannot be 0 because that would clear out that quadratic portion. But let's take a look at one uh, that's already factored. That's x plus 4 times 3x uh, plus 7. 3x minus 7 equals 0. And if you recall the zero product property, it says if you have a times b equals 0, then either a has got to be 0, b has got to be 0, right, would satisfy that. So let's go ahead and uh, solve this x plus 4 times 3x minus 7 equals 0, then either x plus 4 has got to be 0, or 3x minus 7 has got to be 0, and then we solve each of those, right? So x equals negative 4, add 7, add 7, divide by 3, divide by 3. And there's our two answers. Um, let's go ahead and use that by, uh, in this next example, x cubed minus 25x equals 0. The first thing we're going to do is factor out an x out of each of those. And then if you notice, we can keep factoring this. This is difference of squares. So we go ahead and factor x squared minus 25 into x minus 5x plus 5. And we've got the zero product property, except this time we got three things. So if a times b equals 0, a is 0, b is 0, and c is 0. So again, we set each of these equal to 0 by the zero product property. That's our first answer. Add 5 here, we've got x equals 5, and finally subtract 5 on both sides here. So there's our three answers. <clears throat> now notice this one is not equal to 0, so let's go ahead and get one side equal to 0 first before we start solving this quadratic. So 4x squared minus 24x equals 0. And notice we can factor a 4 and an x out of each of those. And we're left with... Our first 4x has got to be 0, or x minus 6 has got to be 0. Add 6 both sides, divide by 4, divide by 4, so x equals 0 on that one. So 0 and 6. All right, I'm going to give you a second. Go ahead and try solving that next one. Solve by uh, factoring. Make sure you get equal 0 first. All right, there's a solution there when you tried that one. Make sure you uh, factor out a 3x first, and then you have difference of squares with x squared minus 9. And then you take each of those terms and set them equal to 0. So you get 0, 3, negative 3. All right, let's go ahead and solve this one. Now, a common mistake here is students forget to get one side equal to 0. So make sure you get one side equal to 0 first. And I'm also going to go ahead and distribute that or foil that out there. And then I got the minus 6 that I took over, and then it's all equal to 0. Combine like terms on this. And now we go ahead and we factor. So we got x plus 1 and x plus 6. Go ahead and check that. Make sure it foils back, and it does. And set each of those equal to 0. And we're done. So we got negative 1 and uh, negative 6 on this. Now, this next one, notice we have four terms. <clears throat> so we want to try try factoring by grouping first. So I take a look at the first two, and I say, well, what can I take out of each of those? It looks like I can take an x squared out of each of those, and I'd be left with x plus 11. And then I'm taking, taking a look at these next two right there. And if you notice, I can take I want to take a negative out, because so I have that first term be a positive there inside the brackets. And they'll both actually go into 121. If you take 121 out of each of those, you'll be left with x plus 11. And then if you remember, now, now I've got these two terms. They both have that x plus 11, so I'm going to factor out an x plus 11 out of each of those, and I'm left with the x squared minus 121. And then notice I also, this is difference of squares, x minus 11, x plus 11. And then set each of those equal to 0. And solve each of them individually. So I got negative 11, 11. It looks like negative 11 twice. 
All right, so x equals negative 11 uh, with multiplicity 2. We'll talk about that uh, later in the course, what multiplicity means graphically. But uh, so your answers are, you don't need to say it twice. You say negative 11 and 11. All right, give you a second. Go ahead and try factoring this one by uh, grouping as well. All right, there's the uh, factored form of that uh, to factor that by group if you want to check your answer on that one. All right, let's go to this next one, x squared plus 7x plus 6. And let's go ahead and solve that. So we know it's x and x, and I'm looking at factors of 6. So I'm either going to try positive 1, positive 6, or negative 1, negative 6, or positive 2, positive 3, or negative 2, negative 3. And I know they got to sum up to be positive 7, so I'm going to go ahead and try the uh, plus plus, and I make sure that that works. Sure enough, it does, and set each of those factors equal to zero and solve. Now, this one's a little bit trickier, and I don't like to do the grouping or the bottoms up method. <clears throat> so I, I just go ahead and I'm going to factor this straight up. And so I, I could either try 6x and x, or I could try 3x and 2x. Let's go ahead and try that 3x and 2x. And now I'm trying factors of 12. So I could go 1 and 12. Of course, one of them is positive, one's negative. 2, 6, or 3, 4. Let's go ahead and try uh, 3 and 4 first. Again, one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative. And let's check that out 6x squared minus 12x plus 6x minus 12. So I got a minus 6x in the middle. I need a minus 1x in the middle. So that's not going to work, but let's try uh, switching the 3 and the 4. See if that works. 6x squared minus 9x. Oh, there it is. Plus 8x minus 12. Notice I got a minus 1x in the middle. So that's it. There's the correct factorization. So if you've got to kind of play with this one a little bit. And then we set each term equal to 0. Negative 4, minus 4, minus 4, divide by 3, divide by 3, add 3, add 3, divide by 2, divide by 2. So we got 3 halves and negative 4 thirds on that one. So that's how you want to go about that. Uh, here we've got, uh, make sure it's not equal to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute that, and then I'm going to take... I'm going to take that 35 over that equals 0. So we got 2x squared minus 19x plus 35 equals 0. So I'm looking at that 2x squared first. So I know it's got to be 2x and x. Oh, and by the way, I, I am going to show you for this one some other ways to do this today as well besides uh, the, just the straight up backwards foil on this. But let's come back to this. So I got 2x and x. And I could try, uh, you know, factors of 35. It's Positive 1, positive 35, or 5 and 7. Um, let's go ahead and try 5 and 7 first, and then we'll go. If that doesn't work, I'll try 7, 5. If that doesn't work, I'll try 135 and 35, 1. Again, it's got to be plus, plus, or minus, minus, but I do notice it's a minus 19x in the middle, so it's going to sum up to that minus 19x. So let's try this one first. Make sure that that works. 2x squared. Minus 14x minus 5x plus 35. Sure enough, there's that minus 19x. So we did factor that correctly. And now we take each term, each of those factors and set them equal to zero. So we got seven and we got five halves. Okay. All right, give you a second. You can go ahead and try this. All right, there's the uh, x distributed. If you want to check yourself on that, you try a problem. Should have ended up with uh, 9 and 4. All right, the square root method. The square root method is very handy. Anytime you've got something of some perfect square equaling a constant, you go ahead and you square root both sides, and you'll have plus or minus the square root of that constant. Okay, so for example, x squared minus 36. I know you can already do this by factoring, of course. That's difference of squares. And so you get 6 and negative 6, right? This is by factoring method or different uh, using the difference of squares. But let's use the square root method, which says, well, if you have a perfect square, take the number over to the other side. 
and then at this point go ahead and square root both sides and you'll have plus or minus the square root of 36 which is 6 there's both of our answers okay this one if you notice is also a perfect square we've got 3x minus 2 quantity squared so this is a perfect square equals 4 so if I square root it it'll undo the perfect square so I'll just be left with 3x minus 2 and then I gotta throw on the plus minus uh, square root of 4 which is 2 and again the reason we do that plus minus is because technically the square root of something squared is the absolute value and so how we accommodate for that you know we just take this is we uh, apply that definition of the absolute value uh, to the other side right so let's go ahead and finish this so I add 2 to both sides so I got 3x equals 2 plus or minus 2, and then I divide everything by 3. So we've got two answers here. We got 2 plus 2 over 3, and we've got 2 minus 2 over 3. So 2 plus 2 over 3, I got 4 thirds. Let me put it up here. I kind of made a mess of this. So we got four thirds, and then we got two minus two, zero over three, zero. So we have four thirds and zero. And that's using the square root method. Again, that's if you've got a perfect square. <clears throat> so another approach to solving quadratics is using is is doing what's called completing the square, right? Completing the square. So this one we've got uh, x squared. Uh, minus 6x uh, plus 7. And if you notice, that won't factor cleanly, right? It won't factor cleanly. And so what you want to do is, first we're going to take the 7 over. And I'm going to leave a big space. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the side. And I'm trying to figure out this number right here. What could I put in right there to make it a perfect square? Well, the trick is you take this b term, this negative 6, so I go to the side, I take b over 2, and I square it. That's the number that you're going to want. In this case, it's a negative 6. Negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. That's the number you want to put in. So this ends up being x squared minus 6x. I'm going to put in a plus 9. And if I add 9 to that side, I definitely better add 9 to the other side to keep it equal keep both sides equals <clears throat> okay and now we can factor this the reason that we put that in is we're trying to find that c term that nine to make sure that it will factor into perfect square so if you notice x squared minus 6x plus 9 factors into x minus 3x minus 3 over here we have negative 7 plus 9 so we've got this perfect square now equals 2 and so now since we have a perfect square, we can square root both sides. And now add 3 to finish this off. So we have 3 plus or minus root 2. So we have two answers, right? We have 3 plus root 2, and we have the 3 minus root 2. All right, there's two answers there. Okay, let's go ahead and solve this one by completing the square as well. So again, take this C term over first. And by the way, this is really handy when it doesn't factor for you. And now we're trying to figure out um, the term that goes in front. Um, I'm sorry, the term that goes in right here. Right? So we go aside, take the B term, that 8. Divided by 2 and squared. That's what we want. So that's 4 squared or 16. So we're going to add 16 in, which means we've got to add 16 to the other side. Now, if you notice, this will factor perfectly. It'll be a perfect square. And 84 plus 16 is 100. So we get x plus 4 quantity squared equals 100 square root both sides. Subtract 4. So we got x equals negative 4 plus or minus 10. So we got negative 4 plus 10. And we've got negative 4 minus 10. So we got 6. We got negative 14. Okay. 
and I should also say, you know, if you're, if you're doing something um, involving, if you have something besides just a one in front of the X squared, like for example, let's say we had two X squared plus 16 X uh, minus 168. Everything's the same on this when you're completing this square, except you gotta take a two out of that first. And then you get that. Then you figure out, oh, eight divided by two, four, four squared, 16. So you put that in, but notice I didn't add 16 to this side, I added 32. So you gotta be careful with that. So two, x plus four, x plus four equals whatever 168 plus 32 is. 200. Now we divide by two both sides. X plus four quantity squared equals 100. Square root, square root. Anyways, we end up in this case, I picked this because it gets the same answers. Negative four plus minus 10. And anyways, so we get six and negative 14. But just be aware of that, okay? All right, let's go on to the last method, the tried and true quadratic formula. And I think it should be magic. You know what? I'm going to stop this and do a second part here.